All right, guys, I did not do an intro to this when I left the house because we were running late because we had to change a bunch of stuff around because apparently there may not be enough snow where we're going to run just the snowmobiles. So that was the word from the ranch this morning. So we also loaded the quads onto the trailer, changed a couple things around, did not get out of town until 930. And after being on the road for 13 hours, we finally made it to Dawson Creek for the night. So we've made it to our hotel. Uh, it is a balmy minus 21 degrees at the moment, not counting the wind chill. So we've uh, got our gear out, the, uh, the rig's all set up here. Andy's showing off his bright personality. It's cold. Uh, so yeah, so we put 1100 kilometers on the truck today. Uh, we are gonna go inside now and warm up and get some sleep because as much fun as this has been, I'm done with today. <laughs> so, <laughs> we will touch base in the morning once we're well rested and had some breakfast and we will make the last 300 kilometer trip up to where we got to unload the sleds. And then we got to drag our gear another half hour in off the grid. And then our bison draw opens up on Sunday. So I'll touch base with you guys in the morning. coffee maker for the morning so that's all right good morning guys all right so it's uh just after 10 o'clock on morning two here we're just getting squared away we're gonna make one or two stops in town here before we uh head the rest of the way to the great white north but uh it is cold this morning went back up to the truck to start it my water is uh frozen solid so that's what we're working with. But yeah, we're gonna get uh, rolling here. We've got three hour drive left ahead of us. And then uh, from there, we got a uh, half hour on the sleds. And then our hunt officially starts tomorrow. All right, guys. So we made it into the airstrip here. We're as far as we can go. We gotta unload here, and then there's a gate we gotta get around, and then we got another about a half hour on the snowmobiles with our gear from here to get to the ranch. So we are unloaded. Uh, got all our gear set up here. You guys are yeah. We gotta unload the sled still, but they're already unbuckled. So we got all our gear. We got. Fuel, gear, bedding, all the fun stuff. That's all loaded up onto two jet slides here. And then I'm gonna give a shout out to my buddy Shane. Thank you, buddy. <sighs> the hitches that we have on the slides are a little heavier duty, so they did not work with the hitches that came with these things stock. So Shane was nice enough to fab us a set of heavier duty hitches that look better than stock. So. It uh, definitely would have been a bigger chore without those. We would have had to Mickey Mouse a bunch of stuff. So the fact that he was able to do those and get those to me the other night in a panic before I hit the road was A+. plus. Thank you, buddy. I haven't done it without you. We're going to get unloaded here. We're going to head in and then we're going to come back out one more time in the dark here and grab the uh, the quads in case we, we need them. The snow is uh, less than ideal. There should be a foot or more snow and uh, you can tell. Airstrip's fairly grassy, but nothing we can do about the weather. We'll make it work, and yeah, talk to you guys in a bit. Bye. So we uh, made it to camp here at uh, Sicani River Outfitters. So these are the digs for the week. Wood stoves going. Lots of places to hang our gear. Stocked us up with firewood. So not... Uh, not a bad little setup here. So our draw opens tomorrow 
Um, so the plan is, I think breakfast in camp here is at quarter after seven. First flight's about eight o'clock. So we are gonna be ready to rock and roll for about that. Uh, bison aren't really a first light, last light kind of deal. So I think being up first thing in the morning isn't the end of the world, but uh, you definitely wanna try and get as much time out there as you can, just because, I mean, they do move and feed pretty well all day, but you, especially the first day or two, you're gonna spend a lot of time just tracking them down and finding them and figuring out where they are. So, so they said to think the most recent track and sign they've seen so far is about three days old. So they're around, they're kicking around, but uh, the weather hasn't been super cooperative. So it wouldn't be bad if we got a dump of snow this week at some point, but we'll see how that all plays out. All right, morning guys. So morning of day one, it is about 10 to nine. So the sun's been up for about a half an hour here. We're a little bit late getting going. Sleds didn't want to start in the cold this morning and then we wanted to get going a little bit late anyways. I want to see the river crossing and I've got to see that during the daylight to see what the ice looks like. Because if we can't cross there, then it changes kind of where we're able to hunt and what we're able to do. But yeah, so a little socked in this morning, but you can see the mountains. The cloud cover is just above them. So hopefully it should be a good day. Wish us luck. Well, as you can tell, the uh, river's not quite frozen all the way through. So that's unfortunate because that cuts off an entire valley back there. But safely, there's not quite a way across that. So we'll wander up the river a little ways. We'll see if there's maybe a spot where it's frozen through a little bit more. Bison poop. Some older tracks. They're definitely coming through here. So that's a good sign. Well, at least we're on the right track. He thinks he's sneaky. Look, I can't see him. We did a bunch of scouting around yesterday. I think we found a couple spots that had some decent signs. So we're gonna pop in there today and hunker down, do a bit of hiking. Definitely a lot more hunters today than there were yesterday. So luckily we've got sleds, a lot of them have quads and there's only so many areas you can take the quads. So we're gonna try and take advantage of that. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get onto something. Yeah, share that sunrise with you guys. That's what it's all about. Or we looked at yesterday, we saw a bunch of fresh sign. And on the way back 
and we saw. I'll try and show you here. So I've run over them with the sled, so they're a little bit hard to see, but uh, those are fresh buck tracks going in over our sled tracks from yesterday. So we've parked the sleds probably a kilometer from where we wanted to go. There's a little bit of a ridge line between here and there. So hopefully that'll distort most of the sound of the sleds up until this point. But we're gonna hike back in there. Uh, you know, I mean, it is primarily still a bison hunt, but it looks like a decent sized buck and there was a fair bit of fresh sand back there. So it would definitely not be a bad idea to take a buck out of here. And that's also the area where we saw the freshest bison sign. So we were gonna hike in anyways, but we're gonna hike in from a little bit farther out now instead and hopefully not blow anything out of there and hopefully find something. So. I will talk to you guys in a little bit, but so far it looks like a good morning. Well, we found our buck. It didn't quite pan out. Uh, we found, followed the tracks into the tree line here, sat, rattled for a little bit back out and then as we were working our way up to another road that swings around the back side of these meadows here that we wanted to look at he busted me in the field there he gave me a snort wheeze flagged me and took off up the hill so we didn't chase off after him didn't want to push him we gave him a couple doe calls ended up working his way back down the ridge actually this ridge behind me here we were able to see him through the tree line through the meadow but he was pretty obscured we could even have a clean line of sight on him. He came back down. We were hoping he was going to swing out onto this skitter trail here and swing around. But he must have cut across it and carried on down the other side. So we gave him a couple minutes and that was just enough time of a head start that we tracked him for a little bit in there, but we don't want to blow him out. So he's in here, white tail pattern, pretty decent. So we're going to carry on with the bison hunt, but... We'll keep the spot in our back pocket. We may come back in here tomorrow morning if this is the area he's cruising around in. So we may set up in here for him for first light and see if we can't find him again. But big body, look like a three by three. No, four by four if you count the stickers. We have route hands on him, so. Decent buck anyways. So that would be all right. We're getting closer. We glass those five elk up on the hill there and then I think we had a bedded down sheep in one of the, in one of the draws too, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, we're going to carry on and hopefully it keeps getting better. Got ourselves a deer bed. Buck was in there today at some point. Spot. It's got a mountain about 200 yards away uphill. And then he's got a clear view down through the timber line. We're going to back out of here so we don't bump him any farther, but this is a completely separate area from where we were this morning. So, but one of the other things you guys want to look for is fresh set of scrapes on this tree here. You can tell they're still green, so they're very, very new. And then right down at the base of it here, there's a bunch of disturbed dirt, so that's a scrape as well. That's a white tail buck marking its territory. So, things to keep in mind. so it's pretty hard to see right now but uh, so it's uh, about two minutes after legal shooting light Andy and I decided to uh, part ways this morning so he's gone in where we saw that buck yesterday uh, I've come down a couple kilometers down the road I can do a spot that uh, we saw a buck bed in yesterday I just got in here and two things one like I've mentioned a few times there's only really one main road here where you're able to drive with wheeled vehicles. Uh, everything else is sled access only. 
Uh, there's ATV tracks going into this area here, and it's definitely sled only. Uh, we were in here yesterday. Those tracks weren't here, so they're fresh from last night, looks like. But, um, you know, don't, don't be that guy. It's, the rules are the rules. It's just ignorant. Um, but on a side note, on top of those quad tracks, there's buck tracks. Um, fortunately, these particular tracks are walking out of here. <coughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, if I work my way up into there, it should still be decent. So we're going to sit, like I said, right now it's about quarter after nine. Um, we're going to sit until probably noon and see how we make out. We'll meet up again, we'll have lunch, and then we'll make a plan for the afternoon. But we're not seeing any fresh bison sign within the last three or four days, so we figured we'd give our, our chance. We've got a white tail buck this morning, so let's face you guys in a bit. It's a deer sign. Still no fresh bison sign. Not being sneaky with you around, is there? Okay, this has been busy. How you guys doing? It's uh, a quarter after 12 on day four. And so far still no fresh bison sign. So we set up on that buck again this morning. And he no showed, so shuffled along. I spotted four elk feeding on this grass slope up above me here this morning. So I'm assuming it's the same. I saw five of them the other morning. I'm assuming it's the same herd. I might have just not seen the fifth one. So we decided to hike up and over the valley, see if we can get a look down into some of the meadows and through some of the trees, see if we can spot these things moving. Uh, they're about the size of a Buick, so even if they're moving through these pine trees out here and uh, you'd be able to spot them moving through there but so far no luck although they do come up this high because they found bison stuff up here but I think those elk have fed over the face we're just just about up about the tree line here so just up on the side of this rise but yeah trying to mix it up a little bit see if we can point where this herd is moving around. The problem is herds are about six to eight animals right now. So it's not a lot of animals to track through a lot of valley. And I talked to a couple guys that were up in the back side of this valley here the other day and they saw a sign up there that was about three or four days old which is about the same as we're finding here. So the herds are split between at least the two valleys. So I'm gonna keep plugging away. See if we can't connect on something here. To keep you guys updated. And here's not a huge fan of mountain hunting so far. Farming up to get over. Alright, catch you guys in a bit. Same face here. Feeding down, I think they fed into that draw.
Good morning, guys. It's the uh, morning of day five. So we did get some snow last night, but it kind of petered out. We were hoping for a little bit more, but we got only about a centimeter. And it, uh, you can feel this morning, it's starting to warm up again already. So we've, um, we've hooked the skimmers up to the sleds here. Um, just the road has was basically graveled out the last couple of days from here back out to the parking lot at the airstrip there. So we are going to run the skimmers and the sleds and the gear that we're not going to need tomorrow back out to the truck today. Um, we're going to take advantage of the skiff of snow we have here. We're going to kind of hunt out more towards the front once we get the stuff back out. Um, but rather than dragging the skimmers across gravel and running the sleds across gravel for 16 kilometers back out of here, we're going to take advantage of the skiff of snow we have this morning before it melts. So we're going to get that stuff out. We're going to swap to the quads. Um, we're going to hunt the rest of the day on the quads. Uh, and then tomorrow morning as well. Um, I feel like we've kind of exhausted most of the places back here. So, and nobody else is seeing anything up here either as far as bison sign goes. So I've got a feeling that they may have shuffled to the front end of the valley because everybody seems to be running to the back end of the valley. So we've got, we're going to pull the plug a day early. Just, uh, if we see some sign, we've got an extra day that we can stick around, but otherwise we're going to take two days to go back just because otherwise it's about a, well, it's supposed to start snowing on Saturday. So we'd probably be looking at about a 16 hour haul in one direction. So we're going to do it this way. Hopefully cut down the, the drive home. But yeah, that's the plan. So we'll see how it works out. All right, guys. So we're going to do a little PSA here. So we came back up to the trucks to load up the sleds. That way we're ready to rock and roll for tomorrow morning and grab the quads. I kept smelling something that didn't seem quite right. It's not like burning grass, but I couldn't figure it out. So we were actually gone. And then it started to rain. I had to come back and grab my rain gear. And luckily the wind had shifted. So I noticed that there was smoke coming out of the trees. Now, just because it's wet, just because there's snow on the ground, doesn't mean you can be an idiot with your campfire. All right. So somebody had a fire right here and then left it. So it's already burnt through there, under the trees. So now we've spent about the last 15 minutes building a fire break around it and starting to dump snow on it. So this is going to kill about an hour of our day, but otherwise this area could completely go up in smoke. So just because you think it's wet, just because it's the middle of winter, don't be an idiot. Put your campfires out. Or if you can't be responsible, just don't have them. Easy as that. But there's no reason for this. Absolutely none at all. Alright guys, it is the morning of day six. Uh, beautiful sunrise out here. We are pulling the plug this morning. We got, uh, we did get some snow last night actually. We got about an inch and a half, two inches of snow last night. Uh, but just with the lack of sign, the sign that has been found has been either way back right on the border of our zone or across the way. Um, and the only way into that spot is with sleds. Now we brought back the sleds yesterday and I mean going across the river and up into that area would have been an all-day affair anyway uh so yeah we're gonna hunt the morning here uh there were some wolves howling yesterday so we're gonna drop down into the flats this morning and see if with the fresh snow if we can't maybe find some some dog tracks do a little bit of a wolf hunt on the way out um but yeah we're gonna work our way out this morning we got the last of our gear packed up here we just squared away with the boys and uh yeah, it's going to be an early day for us. We're basically going to hunt our way out and hopefully be out of here by 11 or noon. It's uh, was it just after 8.30 right now, 8.45. Um, but yeah, that's how we're going to wrap this up. We uh, had a fantastic time here at Sikani. They've been fantastic with us. Uh, the food was absolutely top-notch. So if you guys are looking for a place for your bison hunt, definitely recommend these guys. Uh, the company was good. They really looked after us. And I mean, you can't argue with these views. It... Uh, was absolutely perfect and then there's our cabins ours is the one with the light on there 
So, but yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, hopefully we run into something on the way out, but uh, yeah, that is a wrap for Bison Hunt 2022. So good luck, stay safe, and we'll talk to you in a bit.